So you've been doing videography for a little while and you feel a little bit stuck. You want to level up in your career. You want to move up to bigger budget gigs. You want to move up to bigger clients, but you feel like you don't have the necessary network that actually puts you in the right rooms with the right people. In today's video, we're going to be talking about behind the scenes content, why you should be doing it, how to do it the right way, and what kind of things that you can get from providing value to others that know more than you and that are ahead of you in your filmmaking journey. Now, in terms of capturing behind the scenes content, I tend to pack pretty light. The same gear that I would bring for something like vlogging or something where I'm just doing a running gun shoot with just my camera body, maybe two lenses and a small microphone. That's pretty much the same kit that I'm going to bring to behind the scenes shoots. Unsurprisingly, I use a Sony a7 IV. It's small, it's compact, it's great for video, it's great for photography, and I only really carry my 24 to 70 lens and a 35 millimeter, making it very easy to put that into a backpack and get as much content as they possibly can during that behind the scenes shoot. And something I wouldn't do is I wouldn't bring something like a red Komodo to behind the scenes shoot. Obviously it has great images, it could shoot in raw, it's a great cinema camera, it does all the things that you want if you're shooting a commercial, but this isn't what behind the scenes content actually is. Something that's a little bit more compact works perfectly fine for you. Okay, so I, I might have used it like once shooting behind the scenes content, but uh, I'll talk about that later. Now, the next thing is actually going to be the technique that you're going to use when getting behind the scenes content. And yes, there is a technique. Now, when you're shooting behind the scenes content, when you're getting photo and video, picture yourself as somebody that's a fly on the wall or you're eavesdropping. You don't want to get in the way in terms of production, but at the same time, you want to capture all the things the director and cinematographer are trying to hide. That's anything from the camera gear that's being used, the lighting setup, the director, the producer talking to clients, how things are going on in set, even capturing things like the grips, the gaffers, what crafty looks like, all the things that go on before the button presses record are the things that are going to be the most valuable pieces of content for you. Now there are times I brought on behind the scenes shooters for some of the stuff that I was filming and a lot of the content that I got back were just rehashed images of stuff that I already lit and got. And if I wanted a B camera, I probably would have just hired for that. So when you're getting behind the scenes video, behind the scenes photo, make sure you're actually behind the scene. You don't necessarily have to go and get compositions of things that are already being taken because that's a cinematographer's job. That's a camera operator's job. And I know things are going to look really good on your Instagram grid if you go and get footage of things that are already on the day, but you have to think about the end user in mind. And generally speaking, the production company or the directors bringing you on set to get behind the scenes footage, and you have to keep in mind what's going to be valuable for them and what things they could actually use. I want to go over some rules of thumb when shooting behind the scenes footage on the day. First thing, shoot 24 frames a second unless told otherwise. We could all go for a slow motion look, we could all go for a slow motion shot, however it doesn't always work out when shooting behind the scenes. You want to get things that look realistic and in real time and 24 frames a second is the way to do it. Next thing, and this one's important, is actually hold your shot. Hold it until it's almost a little bit uncomfortable. When shooting behind the scenes, you're translating and conveying a lot of information, and you want to make sure that you're holding your shot long enough so people can see how things are set up. This is just a mandatory shot that I use, but make sure that you capture the lighting setup, and you capture the different lighting setups as they change when they're on set, for two reasons. One, it's a really great establishing shot, and two, if I'm somebody that's shooting on multiple days and I forget how I set up my lighting, I can always reference back to my behind the scenes shot in terms of how I actually set things up. And lastly, this has nothing to do a lot with the camera movement or anything like that, but make a shot list for the day. Have some mandatory shots that you have in your behind the scenes shoots. After you get the shots that you need to, you can start to be a little bit more creative, maybe get into that slow motion footage or just trying new techniques in terms of your photo and video. My business model is mm. behind the scenes, showing people how we created the film, how it was put together and giving them that it's that like that peek behind Oz's curtain. It's that, yeah. it's that like, oh, that's how they did it. Mm. So that's that's why behind the scenes content is so important. And also too, we all need freaking social media content. Yeah. And so I find I prefer to post the behind the scenes rather than me just posing out there in some ambiguous yeah. stance. There's two things you never want to actually see the way they're made is sausage and movies because then you're ruined forever. Yeah. So once you've been on a real film set and you've seen how the movie's made, you're constantly thinking about it while you're watching it. Just like if you've ever seen the way a hot dog or a sausage is made, you can't mm. eat one again without thinking about it. But people love hot dogs and people love behind the scenes content on films. And someone's gonna Google how to make a hot dog. <laughs> so in the last couple of months, I've actually had the opportunity to shoot behind the scenes content for filmmaker Mark Bone and Mike Del Monte in a couple of different projects. 
Now, they've also had great content that they could use for their courses and their YouTube channels as well, but I've also had stuff that I can share on my social networks as well, displaying my skill set in photography and video. Now, that's not all that's happened for me shooting behind the scenes content, but I've also been getting different types of work and I've been getting recommended into different rooms based on shooting that behind the scenes content. Not only are you building a stronger relationship with people you're learning from, but every time you get to show what you can do, you never really know when that's gonna snowball into you working on the sets and working with the clients that you've always wanted to. Offering behind the scenes content gives you unique onset experience to connect with creators that you otherwise might not have seen and to give them value and maybe they'll actually call you back and you never know where your next gig is going to come from. That being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys took some education that you can go and use in your freelance career. Make sure you like, comment, share, and subscribe if you want to see more videos like these, and I'll see you guys in the next one.